you know, when kids come to us with neurodevelopmental disorders, they do not have a level playing field. And it's the way their brain has always worked. If you improve brain functioning, you can, you can level the playing field for them. Now, the neurofeedback you just saw on that spot, that was treating the arousal of the brain, improving the arousal level of the brain to more normal functioning. We also, though, look at brain networks with neurofeedback today. In fact, it's really ultimately even more important than the arousal level if, when children are on the spectrum. Neurons or brain cells function in groups called networks. There are billions of neurons involved in networks. And neurons in different parts of the brain carry out specific functions. And these different networks communicate with each other. This communication or connectivity is measured in the QEG brain map with what's called coherence between areas. So each of these 19 locations perform specific functions, but each area communicates with the other 18 areas. It's called coherence. So the brain can process thousands of bits of information instantaneously to process information to make everything work. Every, like if you want to have normal language uh, skills, wiring, the left frontal and left posterior need to be wired together, need to be linked together. Wherever you see a blue line, by the way, this, this is a brain map of an ADHD child. Wherever you see a blue line, it means the, the functional connections are very weak. They're very poor. So these areas are not communicating with one another. They're not sharing information. So there are enormous holes in this child's processing information. The blue lines means hypo, H-Y-P-O, coherence. The analogy I use is, let's say, in a company, we have 19 engineers given a project to complete together, but each engineer is given a different task to do for that project. But each engineer must be communicating what they're learning and finding with the other 18 engineers. So all 19 engineers' findings are included to complete the project. Well, let's say 12 of these engineers speak different languages and they cannot communicate what they're finding. Their information is left out. Well, the project will go, will go incomplete. That's how this child's brain's working. Now, the good news is there are two ways you can effectively treat this and help this. One way is with our technology in 2023, we can keep the brain map cap on the patient's head like you saw in the first video, and the patient can retrain all 19 areas of the brain to work in coherence. If you get the brain to work in coherence over and over and over, your brain will rewire that way. We've seen wonderful improvements in just four to five weeks treating the whole brain. And that's just coming in several times a week. Accelerated treatment, you can see changes in a few weeks. Now, we have an additional technology we also use with some of our patients to further enhance neurofeedback. It's not neurofeedback. It was developed off the concept of neurofeedback, but it's neuromodulation or neurostimulation. It's electromagnetic pulse energy stimulation and then very mild, weak electrical current stimulation. Uh, these treatments are used in medical schools today worldwide. I compare neurostimulation to putting training wheels on a child's bicycle. Training wheels immediately give the child balance on the bicycle. As the child rides a bicycle balanced, being supported by the training wheels, their brain quickly adapts to how balance feels. It starts replicating it and controlling it now without training wheels. So I could develop out a protocol for this child and we could put a sensor in the frontal part of the head and the back part of the head. And I could develop out a protocol to stimulate all these areas firing in normal coherence for 15 minutes. So for 15 minutes, we can stimulate the brain to a much healthier normal pattern. As that's occurring, their brain quickly adapts to that pattern. It starts copying and creating on its own. You just need to show the brain what to do. With neurostimulation, we've seen some really remarkable improvements in just two to three weeks, and that's just coming in two to three times a week. So we, we don't use it with all of our patients, but we use it in some of our patients. I, I want to show you a brain map, uh, neurostimulation, Again, training wheels on a bicycle. 
I want to show you this brain mapping because it just shows you how clinically helpful neurostimulation can be. This is a child with Tourette's disorder where uh, the child has motor and vocal tics. Motor tics, your face can be twitching, eyes are blinking, your shoulder is jerking. Vocal tics, you could be clearing your throat, making noises or sounds. The child also had ADHD and the child had severe anxiety and on an antidepressant called sertraline, the generic for, for Zoloft. On sertraline, the child is less anxious, but still anxious. And this is the initial brain map, the summary page we give the parents. It summarizes delta, theta, alpha, beta, high beta. Uh, the other, ch the child I showed you with uh, autism had too many slow brain waves. This child's the opposite. This child had fast brain waves. You go down to beta, and high beta, you see this yellow brownish color in beta and high beta, the child's brain's overstimulated. Remember the example I gave, a muscle is overstimulated, too much contraction, he goes into a spasm or a cramp, it's dysfunctional. Well, too much beta also is dysfunctional. This high beta is driving the anxiety and the tics. Even on sertraline, the child's still anxious. Go down to coherence, you see all red lines. In coherence, red lines are different. It's called hypercoherence. The areas are talking to each other, but each of the 19 locations is doing the same thing. There's no differentiation. It'd be as if all 19 engineers do the same assignment. So basically nothing gets done. It's noise in your head. We have been extremely successful for 30 years treating kids with Tourette's disorder, helping them reduce motor tics. We've even had some kids fortunate enough to even eliminate all their motor tics We've not been successful, though, in helping vocal tics, unfortunately, with neurofeedback. Patient comes in, starts off on neurofeedback. I develop out the protocol. After 10 treatments of neurofeedback, the child is only mildly improved. So I decided with my staff, we're going to move this child on to neurostimulation sooner than I normally would. I wrote out the protocol. Eight treatments later of neurostimulation, this child no longer had vocal tics. I've never seen anything like that in 30 years. She, the child's still having motor tics, but they're much less frequent and much, much milder. And now the child has no anxiety at all. So the sertraline was reduced. We re-brain map right away because I need to see where's the child's brain now. I need to know where the brain is now to develop out the next protocol, not where the brain was before treatment. And this is the brain map. This is after two and a half weeks of neural stimulation, the one on the right. One on the left was before neurostimulation. This is two and a half weeks later, only eight treatments. And we can see the beta and the high beta have markedly reduced from what it was over here on the right. Remember, the color bar on the right, the darker color is more abnormal. So the beta now is almost normal. High beta is moving closer to normal. Most importantly, whole coherence now on the right is normal. No lines is normal. This one blue line over here is inconsequential. It's a fully connected, coherent brain. This happened in only eight sessions. Neurostimulation get the brain healthier faster than neurofeedback can, but there are advantages of neurofeedback and there are advantages of neurostimulation. So we use both technologies. The advantage of neurofeedback is the improvements are self-generated by the child. That's why the improvements are long lasting. The downside though of neurofeedback is if the brain is severely dysregulated, there's a limit of how much the brain can improve itself using its own resources. The advantage then of neurostimulation is neurostimulation could care less how dysregulated your brain is. We can stimulate the brain into a much healthier optimal pattern. The downside though of neurostimulation is some of the improvements may not be long lasting unless you follow up with neurofeedback where now it's self-generated by the patient themselves. So, if we do neurostimulation, we then follow it with another course of neurofeedback, but we, we're gonna, we use the most advanced neurofeedback technology in the world in treating the connectivity of the brain, the connectivity between different networks in the brain and within neurons within networks is critical to optimal brain functioning. Brain connectivity is very impaired in autism spectrum. So, through the brain mapping, we can identify which networks are dysregulated linked to symptoms. There are three different networks in the brain involved with autism. And this 
is a side view of the left half of the brain, the right half of the brain. These are called Broadman areas of the cerebral cortex. Back in 1908, a very famous German neurologist, Dr. Broadman, was able to discover what every region of the cerebral cortex does, identify its specific wiring and what functions it controls. And he numbered them from one to 52, called Broadman areas. For example, uh, left frontal and right frontal, 10, 9, 8, 6. A left front and right front is involved with focus, concentration, and emotional regulation, impulse control. 44 and 45, left frontal is Broca's area of the brain. This is expressive language. 39, 40, 41, 42 is auditory processing uh, involved in receptive language. So if the child is going to have normal language, it is going to be able to develop normal language skills, you have to have normal wiring. And 44, 45, 41, 42, 40, 39 all need to be working together on the left side. Now, on the right side, the right posterior part of the brain is the most important area in processing nonverbal social cues. 19, 38, 37, 38, 40 are critical for processing nonverbal social cues in autism for anybody, but they're the most important at work in, in autism. So we can identify what broadband areas are abnormal linked to the child's symptoms. And we can actually do neurofeedback now, it's called S. W. Loretta neurofeedback of broadband areas, where you can actually train the connections between broadband areas deep in the brain. In fact, we even can now treat the cerebellum with neurofeedback. Cerebral cortex has maybe 100 billion neurons. Cerebellum has 60 billion neurons. And they used to think the cerebellum was primarily coordination, motor skills, balance. No, that's only a small part of what the cerebellum does. Cerebellum is very much involved in autism and ADHD. It has connections to the frontal lobe of the brain. Through SW Loretta, we can actually train those connections and you can improve the connections between broadband areas we have found that at least 95% of the child's symptoms are due to abnormal connectivity or coherence between broadband areas. And we now treat that. It's a major breakthrough. And we typically do this in at least the last third of treatment. So to summarize right now, patients can improve their own brainwave activity by strengthening connections in the brain within networks and between networks. Improving the connectivity in the brain, you've opened up more channels for information. So the brain is processing much more information than it ever could before. And again, helping the brain regulate, improve its overall functioning, improve brain functioning. You're going to have better attention, social awareness, language, mood, behavior. And one more important fact, when we treat patients with neurotherapy, they, their brain is then better wired to benefit from all the other therapies, whether it's ABA, speech and language therapy, occupational therapy, social skills therapy. You improve the wiring of the brain, they're going to they're going to develop much more from their other therapies. You want to jump over a hurdle, you've got to have muscles developed to jump over a hurdle. Well, if you want to learn new skills, you want to have optimal wiring in the brain so you can learn those 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 skills. I hope this information ends up being very helpful for all of you. This is just uh, information about contact. Very importantly, if you live in California, we're now able to do remote treatment and training. We typically reserve it for people that live more than 50 miles from either our clinic in West LA or Irvine, that we can actually do remote treatment now, where uh, you use the equipment from us and uh, we do it through TeamViewer. And it's, very, very effective and certainly much more uh, convenient.